Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm gonna to share a declutter with you. I thought this would be fun. It's an example of a declutter that I didn't really think of doing, but now that I've thought of doing it, it's so obvious, and I feel like it's kind of a lesson in sometimes you get so used to the way you're living that you don't take action and you don't even know where to take action. So basically, I have this dresser, and in these top two drawers here, I have basically underwear, some undershirts, and then in this drawer, all like socks and belts. So it's kind of like a miscellaneous couple of drawers, but focused on kind of underwear and socks. And I will give myself the benefit of the doubt that I do live in Minnesota, so having lots of heavy wool socks is important and they take up a lot of space. But realistically, I don't feel like I need two major dresser drawers for all that. Considering that's a third of the space in my dresser, that's just not smart. And that's kind of thematic with something I've been talking about lately, thinking about the container. I'll link a video below where I explain this, but a lot of professional organizers talk about thinking about the space that you're organizing in, not just the content of the stuff you're organizing. So really considering how can I make the best use of the space that I have and to think about the container. And so I'm realizing I am not using this container well. I don't know why I assumed I needed two drawers for these two categories, and I think it allowed me to keep more in this haphazard way just because I thought that was the norm of what I always did and so that's what I always should do. Anyway, let me get in there and show you a little bit and let's get started with this declutter. So before we jump into the declutter, I just wanna say now that I'm done with the declutter you're about to watch, I had such major breakthroughs and I wanna share these ideas with you because I feel like they were real learning moments for me, specific strategies or ways I think about the declutter that I think I will carry with me into the future. So if you wanna hear about that, stick around for the end of the video where I'll chat more about that. But for now, enjoy a kind of satisfying declutter. So I'm not gonna show you inside the underwear drawer because that just feels maybe too personal, but here's the sock drawer. As you can see, it is not organized. Like it's kind of all over the place. I do have socks folded, but some are spare. Like I have spare socks that aren't matched that are just sitting here. I have some packing cubes. I've got an undershirt or like a cami. And I just think if I minimized a bit and reorganized it, I could have half the space and still be just fine. So let's do this and see if it works. I don't know if it's gonna work, but hopefully it will. I'm part of the way through this declutter, and what I'm already noticing is, because the container was way too big for what it needed to be, I had a bunch of extra stuff in there that just didn't make any sense to go in there, so I didn't know where it was. So I did have a couple of tank tops in the sock drawer that I missed and I had been looking for, but they were just sitting underneath some socks. So it kind of reminded me sometimes you need to think about how much of a container do I need for this category? And then it also just attracted garbage. These are cardboard things that the socks came on and I would just keep them instead of throwing them out when I had the opportunity when I took the socks off of them. And I don't know why, but I think also again, because the container was so big, I was just throwing them in there rather than in the trash or the recycling. This is just a good wake up call to be thoughtful about the space for the stuff and also that if you've just neglected decluttering a certain area of your life, maybe go check it out. You might find things that you didn't realize you'd find. For drawers like this where you're keeping a lot of little things, I think a drawer divider is so helpful. Um, it keeps certain categories in their place. So again, you're not using too big of a space in the container for a particular category and you can combine categories in an organized way. I will link these below if you're interested. They just kind of pop like this. You zip them and then it's a little box. Thank you. 
So now that I'm done with the declutter, I have to say, even though it wasn't the biggest declutter on earth, I feel like it was a big learning experience for me, but I feel like there are a few little strategies or ways of thinking about decluttering that are gonna stick with me. And the first strategy I wanna use in the future is to cut storage in half. Somehow if I take two categories and put them in one spot, so if I have two bins of different categories, if I can somehow merge them into one bin with two categories, it forces me to be just a little bit pickier about what I keep and it helps me crystallize what I actually need. I can be like, okay, if I have to fit it into this smaller container, what would I wanna bring with me? Because so often if you have a receptacle to store something that is just a bit too big or just a bit bigger than it absolutely needs to be, stuff just starts spreading out and then other categories start spilling in or you're not actually actively decluttering what's there and gradually over time, it just kind of grows organically and you don't even realize it. Because I had a whole drawer basically for socks, it was like my sock collection just went way overboard. And so I wanna think about that in other ways, like in my bathroom, if I have one spot for makeup and another spot for some of my skincare products or my nail polish, can I take all of that and put it in one little basket instead of having like separate receptacles for each of those? And again, maybe you organize within that basket in some way, maybe you have dividers of some sort, but if you can just half the amount of space that you use for storing something by combining categories, it can make life a whole lot easier and just force you to be a sharper declutterer. Another trick I kind of learned from this declutter that I want to be reminded of is to keep only what needs to be accessible, super accessible. Like this is prime real estate. It's at the top of my dresser. I wanna keep things in there that I'm using regularly. You know, I'm reaching in every single day to that drawer, but I don't wanna keep things that I only use once every few months. Things like Spanx or undershirts that I only wear with specific outfits or slips for under special occasion dresses or tights that I don't wear regularly. Like those are things that maybe I can put away in a little bin somewhere in a slightly more storagey space, like maybe even under my bed or somewhere deeper in my closet. And that was part of why I had these two top drawers full of stuff because I was mixing things that needed to be accessible with things that really didn't. And so thinking also about the space as far as how frequently you use the items, I think can be really helpful in whittling down what you put in a very accessible spot. You gotta think about your little spaces in your home as real estate. Another observation or lesson I learned is to not keep things out of obligation. And I know this one might be kind of obvious. Yes, we shouldn't keep things just because we feel like we have to, but so often I keep parts of things because I feel like I truly am supposed to. And this one is a weird one to talk about, but for example, for strapless bras, so often I keep those straps that you can connect or disconnect, but I never wanna wear a strapless bra when I can wear a strapped bra because strapped bras are more comfortable. So why would I keep these straps that I never use? They do take up a little space. They create a little more chaos in those drawers and I just don't need them. Another lesson I did take from this declutter just to really emphasize this, we should question the assumptions about how we're using our space and what we're keeping and storing. It's making me think like where else in my home are there assumptions that I've made about how much space I need to store something, how many of something I need? You know, even I think about like how many sets of plates or how many plates I have or how many glasses I have. Like, why do we have these standards for how many you're supposed to have? And where are areas where I can question those assumptions and create a new standard of living for me that might not apply to other people, but what areas can I declutter more of in my life where it wouldn't really impact my life negatively? It might even impact it positively and make my life easier. That's just a general theme. I think pursuing minimalism is about rethinking your stuff, rethinking how you're engaging with your stuff and what you actually use, what you actually enjoy, and clarifying your priorities. Anyway, that's most of what I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It's a great way to support the channel. And if you wanna see more videos like this one, then hit the subscribe button below. That's another great way to support the channel. Thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.